and two. Uh, all right, now this Who is going to be funny. I run. I run. Does this mean we get to release the Kraken? <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Iran Man 2. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, starring uh, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. <laughs> all right, now, all right. Starring Robert Downey Jr., I believe. Uh, Matt, I'm going to ask you the common question of, hey, what's this about? Well, you might remember Robert Downey Jr. plays Tony Stark, uh, the comic book character, also known as Iron Man, built himself an iron suit after being injured and having this kind of sci-fi mechanical heart. He builds a suit that makes him really awesome, and, uh, you know, he's a superhero. He's the classic kind of guy. He's got the metal suit. He can kick amazing amounts of ass. Um, but, you know, the trailer can explain it better than I can. All right, let's do it. If you can make God bleed, people will cease to believe in him. They will be blood in the water. And the sharks will come. Slinger acts unnecessary. You don't have to do this alone. Look, I came in, I'll start this one off. I came in very skeptical about this. Uh, I, I liked the first Iron Man, but I didn't love it like everybody else. Oh, my God, Iron Man. I was like, it's a good movie. Everybody calm down, bring it down, okay? And so I came in skeptical, and then I don't love Robert Downey Jr. I'm the only guy in America who apparently doesn't, right? And, and so he's doing his smooth-talking Robert Downey Jr. thing in the beginning. It's driving me crazy. They do a Senate scene that's ridiculous, okay? It's just uh, preposterous. But then, shockingly enough, Slowly by slowly, it won me over. I was like, all right, you know, that was cool, and that was fun, and that was a good scene, and I like Mickey Rourke. I mean, I definitely had issues with it. I had issues with the beginning, I had issues with the end, and I kept yelling to Mickey Rourke inside my head, finish him! Finish him! <laughs> okay? Like God, it's Mortal Kombat. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, you're so slow. I mean, you've been waiting for this your whole life. Go! Go! <laughs> get, get. Release the Kraken. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, but having said that, damn it to hell, by the end it was a fun, fun movie. Now, Matt, I hear that it's not doing as, that, as well as I well, would have expected. You know, on so this movie, movie, they, I, I actually think... Not doing as well among critics. Not yes, doing as well as much critics. Do, it's going to do huge yeah, this weekend at the box office. It's about 71% right now in the tomato meter. The original Iron Man was about a 92. Mm -hmm. Caught a lot of people off guard. Much better than I think people expected. This one... It does some what I actually, as I, the more I think about it, does some brave stuff. You know, it starts out with a really good, you know, about like you'd expect. There's a villain that gets introduced. Mickey Rourke plays this Russian named Ivan Dranko or Vanko, who his father knew Tony Stark's father and claims that his father actually created the arc reactor that is what's keeping Tony alive. Uh, he tries to kill Tony. Stark survives. He gets put in jail. And then you get this second act of the movie, this middle of the movie, that's much more character-driven, and there's very little action in it. And then you get the big climactic scene at the end. And, and in the middle of the movie, you have all this story stuff that happens that isn't really specifically relevant to Iron Man, but it's as relevant as to Marvel's other projects, most specifically the Avengers coming up, as it is to anything else. We're introduced to... Um, Scarlett Johansson's character, who is the Black Widow, which uh, will that name will mean something to the comic book fans, who was a founding member of the Avengers. Uh, Nick Fury, played by Sam Jackson, gets a much larger part this time and talks about the Avengers project. He was just project. teased in the first one. He was one. teased in the first one. He actually gets a he had to substantial stay the part in the first one. Right. We get uh, we do get a little bit deeper relationship with uh, with his with Pe uh, Pepper, his secretary. Uh, played by Gwyneth Paltrow, and then... A little more than his secretary. Well, I mean, right, who is now the right. CEO, right. right? She gets appointed CEO because Tony's busy. You, you learn that Tony's technology is killing him, and he needs something to... You know, he, needs he, needs more, to uh, he needs more... He needs more... more delicate, more... Unobtainium. It's actually... Jamba juice. He needs unobtainium. That's <laughs> right. what he needs. Um, 
You know, and we also get his business rival, a character named Justin Hammer, played by Sam Rockwell. Now, does that sound a lot of, like a lot of stuff? Yes. There's a lot that happens in that second act, and it really throws the pacing off. But that being said, none of those scenes did I find boring. The pacing's a little weird, but I enjoyed every scene in it. Now, I think that you could probably cut about 10 or 15 minutes out of the movie and be a lot tighter. But nonetheless, I really liked it. I'm going to give it a 7.5. All right. Uh, ben? Well, I mean, I disagree with a lot of what, uh, what Matt said there, um, some of which I agreed with. I thought the pacing was excellent um, throughout. So I, did I. I think I'm in ben, Again, I, I'm in Ben's camp. What's I, happening today? I, I Bizarre think that, world. I think you're wrong about that opening Senate scene. It's unrealistic, but it's a comic book movie. Now, that said, I'm not going to allow some things just because it's a comic book movie. And I thought Gary Shandling was so great that it overcame the fact that, yeah, obviously that's not what happens. And I just want to point and, out, since, since you, know, you guys have your bases on the political show, I'm, I'm shocked that no one mentioned the Second Amendment in that scene. Uh-huh. Oh, the right um, to bear arms? The, well, yeah, you yeah. know, that they're trying to take Tony's suit, and he says no. I'm going to keep my suit. And at one point, like, oh, yeah, that's good. Oh, it would have been, Where's it the Second Amendment? That's come true. On. That would have been a, that would have been a fair, uh, fair mention. So I, uh, I, I thought that uh, that sort of uh, worked in general. But there were moments then that I thought sort of betrayed their own set of rules, which I hate in every movie. I get that, you know, when he constructs his new system where he figures out a way to sort of save himself, that he doesn't hire contractors and he does it in an hour and a half. Right. Even though that's You need ridiculous. a montage. <laughs> right, I get that. But I don't get why toward the end of the movie he suddenly knows exactly where Gwyneth Paltrow is and can fly there instantly in an effort to save her. That breaks their own rules. It's a fairly realistic movie. He's a real person. There's absolutely no way for him to know that. That bothered me. A couple other things bothered me in a scene that's getting a lot of credit, John Favreau drying into the race in Monaco and driving through the I hate stuff like that. Yeah, me um, too. Yeah. I thought the action sequences were fairly pedestrian when all was said and done in general. Um, but the character stuff, to agree with you, I thought was outstanding. And why this movie succeeded in the first place and why I thought it's the best, by far the best comic book movie of all time, the first one, not even close, I can't even put any of the Batmans in the same league, Wow! Um, hmm. is that I, I mean, and I liked the first, uh, you can shake your head all you want, it doesn't, uh, the, uh, why the first, uh, and Batman, the only, the Batman Returns is the only one that's like in the, would be in the ballpark. Um, but it's because it was character driven, uh, and that made it so terrific, and Robert Downey Jr. did. And here, my fear was you add all these people, you add Don well, Cheadle, and you add Sam Rockwell, and you add Mickey Rourke. And, and it is character driven, and I think that's great, but I think that some of those scenes were unnecessary. You know, there's a scene where once Tony kind of starts to figure out that maybe he's been a jerk to Pepper all along, there's a scene where he goes back to, you know, that scene where he goes back to her office, what's now her office, formerly his office. And it's like this three or four minute scene where it's more of, okay, well, we already know that Tony doesn't really listen to Pepper, and they talk over each other. And do we really need that whole scene? I do. Right? I, I think that I, was a I, great, great, great I scene. I think it was a fun scene, but I think it was somewhat unnecessary. Well, I think that it, you know, it, it, I don't think anything, well, here's I don't think what, it accomplished anything. Well, here's what we've left out of this whole thing, because I don't think it's fair to compare this movie to Please Give or to Babies or to <laughs> Sophie's Choice. Uh, I don't even <laughs> think it's fair to compare it to Batman. I'm not even sure it's fair to compare it to any other action movie. What I've decided to essentially put it in the league with is sequels. Um, which are so often below, to say nothing of action movie sequels. So, and while I don't think the action scenes were all that great, this was a great character-driven movie. I thought John Favreau, I thought the pacing was great. I thought he gave all these stars, I mean, counting, you know, Sam Rockwell and Scarlett Johansson and Scarlett Don Johansson, Cheadle. who has never looked better, if she you ask me. so great, and she always Put her looks in a good. cat suit for two, for two hours, and I'm there. You know, and Paltrow, and like I said, Cheadle, Rourke, all these giant stars, and I thought he gave them all exactly the right amount to do. Nobody felt extraneous to me. And then, after all that, led by Robert Downey Jr., who I do think is outstanding, it was funny. It was exceptionally funny. And it had a great script, and he kept it moving. And then it's so, to me, it's just about the best action sequel in years. Hmm. Um, so I gave it another B plus. I gave it an 8. All right. Uh, I, um, I, I also gave it an 8. I gave it the same exact score. Because I was, like I said, bothered by the beginning, bothered by the final fight a little bit. Some of the stuff like driving backwards at the at the race, yeah, yeah. I hate that, <laughs> yeah, right? Me too. Yeah. But 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 I thought it zoomed along. I thought it built great characters, uh, and the action scenes were like, what you need out of an action movie is coolness. Okay, we talked about this in respect to the losers, and it was cool. I mean, yeah. I, I was like, but I, think, I felt like a little kid, you know, as 
like the two of them. Now there are two of them. That's from <laughs> another. <laughs> okay, and that was badass. And then it, I don't, I don't think it was pedestrian at all as far as the action scenes. Uh, and and I and just meant that that's not what sold it. It was the humor. I mean, I laughed a ton. The audience laughed a ton. It was mm -hmm. funny, and that I think added to the coolness more so than the kicking the drones. But you Le know. So let me just say two and a half real quick things. One, there was great cameos. So everything was really well timed. Bill O'Reilly had a really nice cameo, and yeah, I was that, like, okay, it's it, funny. That pissed me off. Oh really? No, I like that. I you know, and I of course I don't like O'Reilly, but I thought he you know did a what? good job of making fun of himself. Let me tell you why because he doesn't get to come in and make fun of himself. And we don't get to say, oh, you're cute, you're part of it, it's okay. You get to come in and make fun of yourself. You're the cranky old conservative, ha, 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 ha. No, you hurt America, you're bad for America, you're unpatriotic, <laughs> and we don't get to include you in our movies so that you're part of the mainstream and get to accept you. No, Bill O'Reilly, you're out, you're bad for America, Hollywood doesn't accept you, America doesn't accept you. Release the Kraken. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> That's I'm how just, Ben feels about I'm it. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Uh, but I, I, I thought it was nice. But Favreau has interesting politics, too. That might be why he was in the movie. I have but no it, problem with the politics. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. I, like, I like Favreau. And so that was my, other, my major final major comments. Favreau turns out to be a really good director. Yeah. You know, action... Comedy, remember going all the way back to Swingers. And then he's funny as an actor. Well, and Iron I Man, that, Iron Man too. And I, yeah, he's funny as an actor. I mean, all of a sudden, I, I a little bit of a man crush on him. Yeah, all of a sudden, developing a little one. I and yeah. I didn't expect it. Like, well, and I, I think that after this weekend, he's going to be the guy sitting on the biggest opening weekend of all time. There's a really good good chance of that. Yeah, it, it, it's and he and he deserves it. He did a great job. And then finally, for me, the reason I liked Iron Man two better than I liked Iron Man one, and 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 why maybe the tomato meter is what it is is that I, it's probably a matter of expectations. Totally. Yeah. yeah, because I saw Iron Man late. At that point, everybody's talking about, oh, this movie's awesome. Totally, and I, yeah. so I came in, I was like, oh, it was good, but it wasn't awesome. <laughs> and here I didn't have very good uh, high expectations, and he came in and it really delivered. So I, I think that's probably some of the reason Yeah, I think that's it. the difference with me, is I went into Iron Man thinking, okay, well, we're probably going to, you know, it's, yeah. Iron Man, as much as people may argue otherwise, to me is kind of a secondary character out of that universe. It's like making an Aquaman movie or a Green Lantern movie. Like you got to really would be badass. Which right? would be cool, we know now, <laughs> but it's not like doing Batman or Superman. It's not like doing Spider Man Vincent or the Hulk. Vincent Chase would be a great Aquaman. Yeah, that's a good call. Somebody uh, uh, should call Jim Cameron about that. Um, let me just say something. I know we're over, but it's relevant because Jenk and I we don't do a lot of name dropping because we can't because we don't know anybody. But this is a rare. No, here comes the poker story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. That should have been a spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, we were playing poker with uh, John Favreau, Dax Shepard, and Kevin Pollack, like always, <laughs> in the Hollywood Hills. <laughs> yeah. It happened like twice in our life. Happened once to me. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. And, uh, and Favreau mentioned that he was making this Iron Man movie, and <laughs> Jank was like, oh, make him a Turk. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't get banned from the game. That's yeah, why we never, the never, they never go back. Dark. And then Favreau mentions that, yeah, it looks like it's going to be Robert Downey Jr. It's this Marvel comic thing, Iron Man. There already been so many comic book movies. And Jack and I looked at each other and we were like, oh, John Favreau's directing Robert Downey Jr. in a, in a, uh, <laughs> uh, in a comic book movie. And we were like... <laughs> yeah. I, no, no, no. I'll yeah. go further. Yeah. I never thought it was going to work. Left, when we yeah. left and talked, we were like, that movie is going to suck. <laughs> Okay, yeah. and I, but you, you know what? I'm I'm here to tell you, Favreau. Oh yeah. my God, I am totally, 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 <laughs> totally, totally We're sorry. But you know, you got to give credit where where credit is due with him. Every one of his movies has a fresh tomato meter. Every yeah. one of the movies that he's directed, yeah. Made, Elf, Zathura, Iron Man, and now Maid's, Iron Man Two. Is so underrated. And, and one other cool thing about Favreau, uh, which is it relates to our director Andrew. Andrew's at the, at the 12 o'clock showing at Arclight here in L.A., which, by the way, I left Please Give, and I'm like, what's going on at Arclight? Jesus, there's like a million people here. So I asked somebody, they're like, oh, Iron Man. They were there to see the 12 o'clock showing at Please Give. <laughs> <laughs> Unlikely. And, so, and there was this great buzz, and it turns out, unbeknownst to anybody, Favreau and Robert Downey Jr. show up. Oh, really? Yeah, and they come and talk about the movie a little bit before the movie. And so Andrew saw that, no, that's and that's cool. really cool. When yeah. I bought the ticket to Please Give, conversely, I was the, first, I was the only person to buy a ticket in, in the giant 350-person theater until about two minutes before the movie. Then I was joined by five others. <laughs> so not, <laughs> not quite as much buzz yeah. for Please Give. Yeah. All right, by the way, so our final rating, as you'll see on Iron Man, is 7.8. You know, despite our slight disagreements here, we, we largely agree that it was a very, very good movie. And uh, if you're looking for a good action movie, I don't think you're going to be disappointed at all.